Whipping all this dope up in the trap house We fuck all you bitches at the trap house I can't trust you, okay, can't give you real address I can't trust you, okay, can't give you real address They don't mean that be like Jerry Stagger I might fall in love with my trap house Stay Savage, Stay Savage, your boy Shino Ventro. What's poppin' today? We are back with the videos. We've been on top of it. It's November. You guys know I'm trying to grind as hard as possible. You know what I'm saying? Trying to keep that content flowing for you guys. So today, I want to talk about my favorite part of Boruto. Now, I know a lot of people always say they watch Boruto for Naruto. They watch Boruto for Sasuke. You know, that's pretty much what's been going on. And I will say, the Boruto anime did kind of clickbait everybody into watching it because the first episode insinuated that Naruto possibly died. So that was a bit of clickbait. As much as you love Boruto and as much as you enjoy the characters as a whole, that was kind of like a grab for older people, like the people that thought Boruto was just going to be washed up or it's going to be like, you know, just some type of money grab and shit like that. When they insinuated that Naruto was dead, that made previous fans want to continue to watch and basically wanted to keep seeing how the series was going to progress and see what actually happens to Naruto so that is kind of a clickbait not to mention when you saw episode 65 we see Boruto appear with the five Kage and I'm gonna keep it a book everybody wanted to watch that because they wanted to see the previous generation ninjas that were Kage's fight against Momoshiki and Kenshiki you know they wanted to see what happened they wanted to see Naruto and Sasuke pair up and fight so like you know not to mention everybody took the Twitter and made it really really hype so that was like one of those moments where they wanted to watch it because of these like previous characters because they actually wanted to see each character progress to Hokage or you know Mitsukage, Suchikage, Rakage you know what I'm saying uh they just wanted to see their favorite characters as the Kages that they wanted to be you know the Rakage etc 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 so we also saw Sasuke pair with Naruto again for that wombo combo combination on Momoshiki as and there was a lot of things like that so what we've seen in the Boruto world you know I will say they have done some things to grab the previous audience and I don't find anything wrong with it I know a lot of people are upset by it they was like well why you just couldn't start fresh and give board to his own a new but mind you a lot of people were already saying they didn't want to watch board till due to they feel like it was being a cash grab so it was one of those things where people were watching it to see what was going on with the other characters you know see what's going on with naruto and sasuke see what was going on with you know their kids or see what's going on with the five kages the kids that were in a previous generation that became kages so they did a good job with that that's what they were supposed to do they were supposed to be able to transfer their audience over to the new anime while also pulling in new people so while they were pulling in new people i'm gonna say this kawaki has officially been the best thing to happen to the boruto manga he hasn't appeared in the anime obviously in the first episode he appears but that's not necessarily him appearing he's never properly introduced they just showed him to fighting on top of the hokage faces and mind you he used the clickbait that basically gets everybody from naruto shippuden to watch boruto naruto next generations now, mind you, I feel like if you're a true dedicated fan to the series, you're going to end up watching it anyway. And then, mind you, if you continue to watch it, you're probably going to get more invested into the series. You're going to probably start watching it as a whole and enjoying it. So for me, Kawaki has been like that very powerful character that's come in with this distinctive personality and everything we're starting to learn about his past and regarding how dark it is. You know, that has been like my favorite part of the series. Now, mind you, they have been people like Kagura, there have been people like Ryogi, you know, they've had all of their limelight, they all had like their moments to be introduced, they had Shinki, you know, they had these characters that appeared, but like, I still don't feel as like they were so impactful like Kawaki, like Shinki appeared, he got this flashback in the tuning exams arc, you know what I'm saying, It well not even the tuning exams, the tuning exams preliminaries uh, before Momoshiki invaded, so technically it's the Momoshiki arc, but the thing is like, you know, they gave him a flashback, but there wasn't no detail, they just showed him in the desert Garo and picked him up and that was it you know what I mean versus like we see like Kawaki appear he has this backstory and then his it's really dark it's really sad and I will go into more detail but mind you we have Ryogi who has this backstory was kind of sad and a little bit dark too because he was swindled into like working with this guy but like mind you his parents were like there for him his parents cared for him his parents were more so betrayed versus Kawaki dad sold him off to like you know Jigen he basically he, like sold off his kid so the kid can go be like some type of lab rat or some shit like that so he could be 
become a vessel so it was like one of those things where you looking at it you're like yo you just straight up sold your kid and mind you before that he was telling kawaki he was worthless he was beating kawaki up kawaki was laying on the floor and shit like that there's no source of kawaki's mom being around you know so this dad was pretty much treating kawaki like complete shit then you know we have kagura who also has a dark kind of story but it's not necessarily kagura has a dark story it's it's really ill that you know a lot of things that happened to kagura's grandfather was passed on to him so you know obviously his grandfather you know was known as like the most bloodiest mizukage you know what i'm saying yagura was known as like this person that was just always out for blood type of shit you know yagura was dope yagura was my favorite you know tell beast just for the design wise obviously i like naruto a little bit more but like yagura was clean to me but it was still like you know he was being like held against and stereotyped because of his you know grandfather's past not necessarily anything he was doing so it was like okay you know you're a dope character you're interesting but you're like being traumatized by like the past of your grandpa so it's not necessarily like you have this dark upbringing on this dark story more more so everybody's just holding you to this dark era because of your heritage so it was like nothing you really went through versus like you were always being like made fun of and it kind of puts you in a mental like shock place and basically helped you like stab people up, you know what I'm saying? So like he blacked out being mentally oppressed by everybody, stereotyping him to be like his grandfather versus Kawaki has been this kid who was introduced into the series he was basically tortured to a certain degree by his father you know he was beat that was abuse man that was straight up abuse what can a kid do against a grown ass man especially like you know how big Kawaki's dad if you look how like huge Kawaki dad was you know what I'm saying Kawaki was just like this small ass kid versus like you know this guy was huge you know what I'm saying so he basically beat the shit out of Kawaki, then Jigen pops up, Jigen pretends to treat him nice and then tells him, hey, I'm gonna be your father figure, and then now you're watching all these other, like, test babies being get killed off and like all these other kids that are like just like you they're being killed off one by one you know while jigen tries to transfer the karma seal and experiment on you so it was like yo you have the darkest story in boruto you know what i'm saying this is the darkest pet that we've seen in boruto because if you look at boruto he has both his parents nothing's like bad you know everything's good for him he's just a spoiled brat you have sarda you know her mom is there her dad pops up from time to time she doesn't really know her dad but that's more so due to Sasuke's secret mission mind you Sasuke probably don't want people to know he has a daughter because he is an outlaw to a certain degree obviously he got pardoned by Naruto but mind you Sasuke has lived in the underground world and most bandit and criminal ninjas know about Sasuke Uchiha they've heard about Sasuke Uchiha Sasuke has developed a rep in the black market of the ninja world he's developed a rep in the underground syndicate of the ninja world so people know who he is and I'm pretty sure people has it out for him not to mention being one of the only survivors of the Uchiha clan people wants his KK Genkai you know so if that was like to get out that he had a child that he had a daughter you know they would go after Sarda so it's like Sarda's like you know she's being kept secret because you know he's protecting her a lot of people don't realize that but mind you it's not as dark as it's, as it seems you know what I'm saying it's more so his job then we have Inojin who has both his parents we have Chocho who have both of their parents Shikadai both of his parents you know you all these generation kids have their parents and you know have their families and they had this great upbringing but then we had like you know fucking Kawaki who's just treated like shit you know what I'm saying even Mitsuki had a better upbringing than fucking Kawaki even though Mitsuki was an experiment Orochimaru still treated him well allowed him to make his own decisions basically gave him different you know directional points basically to help him to become his own person and he also treated him well like if you look when he asked him you know asked Orochimaru if, are you my mother and are you my father you know Orochimaru is like I'm whatever you want to be want me to be because at some points in my life I was a, a, a woman at some points I was a man at some points I was other things you know what I'm saying it's more for you to decide you know we've seen Orochimaru be very nice to Mitsuki you know what I'm saying compared to how Orochimaru technically is so even then you know even though his mis his like upbringing is still shrouded in terms of his experimentation Mitsuki was still treated better by his parents you know being completely like abused by your parents is completely different different from naruto being born an orphan because his parents wanted to save like the, the village you know what i'm saying they wanted to protect the people you know obviously sasuke's family got slaughtered but mind you sasuke's family didn't like you know like treat him like shit this is the father actually head head 
treating him like shit. Kawagi was always treated like shit. Then he's treated like an item to Jigen. At first, Jigen talks to him as if he's going to accept him as his son. And, you know, he's basically telling him, you know, I'm going to be your father figure. You can look up to me as your dad now. You know what I'm saying? Like that. But if you look at the way Jigen actually carries himself and the way he carries, you know, himself around the inner car, he talks about uh, Kawaki as if he's just an item. Is this He's just, you know, he's a vessel. He, this is all he is. This is a vessel. He doesn't have a personality. I don't care what his will is. He's going to do what I tell him to do because he belongs to me. I I paid for it. I bought it. He's mine. You know what I'm saying? So it's like Kawaki was treated like shit from the start, like straight out the wound. It wasn't that, you know, he was outcasted or he was, you know, like, you know, treated differently because he had like a tell beast or some shit like that, even though his parents were heroes. You know, he's outcasted because his dad is an asshole. You know, he was sold. Then Jigen like fucks over him and treats him like an experiment. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure he did more experiments on him after he received the Karma Seal due to him being able to change his molecular structure. It was even noted at by Katasuke, whoever helped him be able to change his molecular structure like that in a single instance was really referred to as a genius. Whoever did this did it organically and they made it extremely well. You know, they basically stepped up their powers and like stepped up their scientific developments to help Kawaki be this mad weapon. It's like he's this human engineer weapon based to basically destroy shit. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know what Jigen's objective is. Is either Jigen's trying to resurrect something and put into Kawaki's body or Jigen himself is trying to take Kawaki's body. We don't necessarily know, but mind you, the whole development behind Kawaki has never been something good. Kawaki has never known anybody to treat him nicely. So that's why he's coming to turn with Naruto and basically seeing how Naruto treats him and basically seeing how the family household treats Boruto. And you know, he's basically learning to be accepted and learning to be treated nicely because growing up he wasn't treated nicely if you look at when garu uh basically came to apprehend him you know it was one of those things where we seen garu just more so refer to him as the vessel and he was nothing more as a tool he was nothing like of real use he was just you know this engineered weapon that was basically made so they can uh, obtain this objective and then go with this goal you know what i'm saying it was one of those things where you just see kawaki get messed over time and time again this man has the darkest upbringing in the whole entire series so far like this man had a dark backstory and i'm pretty sure it's going to get more dark as it unfolds like if you look at the bits and pieces and everything that we know about kawaki thus far it has been something that was very dark it wasn't nothing that was he he ha ha versus boruto got to grow up he got to play with him and worry he got to hang out with Kona homaru as his big brother hanabi chan you know he got to hang out with all these different people you know not to mention surround himself by people that love his father and then you know mind you when his dad was there or when hinata was there you know what i'm saying it, it, it was always good you know it wasn't that naruto just wanted to be away or naruto treated him like an asshole naruto was off being hokage doing his job you know that's what the hokage did if you guys look at previous series the hokage of the village always did extensive amount of paperwork they did pass a bunch of laws they did all these different things but mind you they also protect the villages when villages needed to be protected so that's something we see naruto doing that was naruto's whole purpose in the entire series so you know obviously boruto is upset with it but it's like you're being selfish versus you're now with this kid who's really been traumatized or really treated like shit he's been made fun of or like you know put down by the people in the in the car or you know what i'm saying he was always talked to like he was just an item you know it, it just doesn't make sense uh but overall that's why kawaki is my favorite part of the boruto franchise and i honestly can't wait till he's introduced into the anime because he's done so much in the manga thus far you know the manga was a what 28 chapters right if you look at when Kawaki was first introduced, ever since then, we've seen something very detailed about his backstory and something that always had his involvement. I think this whole Kawaki arc itself that we're getting in the manga is really amazing. I'm glad it's finally at that moment, and I can't wait till you guys see it in terms of the anime, and I can't wait till people see it animated because I know a lot of you guys watching this video are going to be like, oh yeah, you know, I read the manga, but then some people are going to be like, I don't read the manga, and I'm just waiting for him to appear in the anime, and like once they finally get to see it, they're going to be like, oh shit, 
this is the quacky everybody's talking about. You know, I see people talk about it, but like I don't really know the depthness or the context of what you guys speaking on. So like if I was able to like actually see it, I can enjoy it a little bit more. So let me know your personal thoughts and personal opinions. What is your favorite part of the Boruto franchise? Mine will be Kawaki and how dark his story is. If you guys have any video topics you would like to see me cover, make sure you leave those in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like. And with that being said, finally, stay true and stay real. And until next time, see you guys later. Bye, Zee.